Well, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. Hey, this one's coming from San Antonio, Texas, our little tiny house Airbnb rental. And uh, we're going to talk today about taking typewriters on the road. Stay tuned. Well, typewriters can be heavy and bulky. And if you're driving on a road trip, should you bring the smallest ultra portable typewriter you have in an effort to save space? Or should you bring a little bit bigger typewriter that might give you a little bit more capability and comfort while you're typing? Well, that's a very interesting question. A few years ago, I believe it was September 2015, my wife and I went on a long road trip around the western U.S. We took Highway 89 from Flagstaff, Arizona to Glacier National Park in Montana and then cut over to the Pacific Northwest, went up into Vancouver and then down the west coast. It was a nice trip, several weeks long, but having never traveled extensively before with a typewriter, uh, the only previous experience I had was with a small Royal Mercury typewriter going Going out to the beach in California several times, I decided I would take my little Hermes rocket. Since we had packed the car relatively full for our two-week trip and I figured, well, space would be at a premium, I'll just bring the tiny little typewriter and I'll be happy that way. Well, it turns out the Hermes rocket was a fine typewriter. Mechanically, it works fine. It is, however, an ultra-portable typewriter and as such, it has certain intrinsic limitations as a writing tool. And it turns out on that particular trip that I was writing every day just about, photographing my uh, written pieces with my camera, editing, editing them on my iPad and uploading the images to Flickr and to my blog. So I was blogging every day, typecast blogging on the road with a typewriter. So I was doing a lot of writing. Um, so it turns out <laughs> the way I was storing my typewriter is, um, of course we had the trunk of the car pretty full and a lot of stuff in the back seat, but mainly we had stuff down on the floors behind the front seats. So the back seat itself would be free for one of us to sit in or lay crosswise in if we wanted to rest while the other person's driving. And I had the typewriter sitting on the floor or behind the driver's seat or sometimes I'd have it on the, the, the rear seat behind the driver. And it turns out either one of those positions, I could have been bringing a more of a medium sized portable. It had, I had just as much room, I had no problem. I think the only difference you would really notice is if you're lugging the typewriter from the car up to a second floor hotel room and back. These are a little bit heavier typewriters than an ultra portable, but with them you get more. Now this happens to be a Remington Quiet Rider, so let's look at this and let's talk about some of the features the Remington Quiet Rider and other typewriters like Smith Corona uh, Silent Supers, for instance, might have over an ultra portable that you might want to think about carrying one of these instead. Well, one of the things that might uh, be obvious to you is that these medium-sized portables, oftentimes in the mid-20th century versions, come in a, a case, a hard case. The hard case does protect the typewriter better than a lot of soft cases that smaller portables come with, like your olive 80 letter is. The thing about the hard cases, though, they, they're bulky. They can be bulky, right? It looks pretty big. But many of them, including this one, have the feature where the top half of the lid can be removed by sliding it sideways. And it's a convenient way to use the typewriter, especially when you've carried it someplace like to a restaurant or cafe or wherever. Uh, and you can keep the typewriter in its bottom case. Now, some of these typewriters, the bottom cases are not that attractive. I don't really like using them, but the, it turns out that at least on this Remington Quiet Rider, I really love the look of it. The brown leather trim, it's kind of rubbery material, and the stitching. It's just a nice appearance. The rounded corners, uh, and there's enough room in here along the right side that I can put one of these narrow wide out uh, correction tape cartridges so it stays in there with me a lot. But if you don't like to use typewriters in the hard case, you can simply release the typewriter, move it out of the hard case and set it on a table or whatever. But it is a convenient way to operate it. So some of the things, some of the features that a more full featured typewriter like this one is going to give you over a, an ultra portable, comparing it to a, a Japanese Brother typewriter or, an, or another really smaller one like a Hermes Rocket, one of the features you get is the full 
key set tabulator, the uh, tabs being able to set and clear at all uh, character positions. That is really handy. It's also nice having a manual ribbon reverse uh, switch because sometimes on certain ribbons, even though the typewriter has a reversing system, sometimes when it gets down near the end of the ribbon, it wants to keep reversing itself in the wrong direction, and it's nice to be able to force it to go back the way it should. That's very handy. Uh, the touch selector on this machine up here, it works. Actually, the one, two, three, it works pretty good. It's nice to be able to adjust, have an adjustable touch that actually works. And of course, uh, your choice as to whether you want to have a red or a black ribbon, that's up to you. I find it's nice for some things like blogging to have the red ribbon, the bichrome ribbon, and be able to use that setting just because it can, you can highlight bullets and titles and headings or whatever in red ink and it kind of makes it a little more, a little nicer appearance for your blog article if that's what you're doing on the road. I was going to say one of the biggest features of a semi-large typewriter like these old larger portables, one of the most important features that I appreciate is having a carriage release lever on the left side. Especially if you're like me, right-handed, I use the correction tape on my right hand a lot, and so it's nice to be able to use my left hand at the same time to be able to move the carriage into position and also to move it back after the correction to where my printing position should be so I can retype over the erased character. So having a carriage release lever on the left side is really super nice. That's, again, one of the nicest features of a medium-sized portable. Having a larger carriage ret return lever also, a line advance carriage return lever, having a larger one, it just makes it much more convenient for, for writing. I know in the case of the uh, Hermes Rocket, it has a very, very, very short carriage return lever, the early Rocket that I have, and it's almost non-functional, really. You're, you're almost just as good just by holding the typewriter from sliding as you're using that really short lever. Uh, it's almost the same as you just push on the carriage with your hand. You wouldn't even need the lever pretty much. So on that portable typewriter that lever is pretty non-functional. But on these larger machines they have really nice long levers and they do really work well. I really love them. So I had someone ask me recently, how quiet is a quiet writer? Well, it's not as quiet as a laptop computer, that's for sure. It's still a typewriter. It's still a manual typewriter. But I'll tell you that it's a little quieter than a, a non-quiet writer in the sense that uh, if you tap softly on the keys. If you have a nice fresh ribbon, first of all, a fresh ribbon helps, then you don't have to hit quite as hard and you can get a adequately dark imprint being fairly quiet. A lot of it really has to do with the condition of the platen roller, how hard the rubber is. And of course there's just an intrinsic amount of noise that any manual typewriter makes. I think this is another reason why it's a good idea to keep the uh, typewriter in the base if you're typing in public. First of all, it makes it easier to remove the typewriter. You know, you just set it down, take the back case half off, and you can leave it in the bottom. And then when you it's ready to go, and ready to leave where you're at, you just slip on that top case half, and you're and you can grab it and go. Uh, it's a little more involved to have to remove the typewriter from uh, the whole case itself. So, Also, the case has more surface area on the bottom and it's less likely to slide around on the table, whereas if you have the hard little rubber feet on typical old typewriters, it's going to slide around probably easier than just leaving it in the case itself. You know, there's another aspect to traveling on the road with a typewriter and using a typewriter in public and how it relates to whether you should be bringing an ultra portable or a slightly larger machine. And that is, it has to do with your role as a typewriter evangelist, if you will. If you are a typewriter collector, an avid user of typewriters and an avid collector, being out in public with a typewriter, you're kind of representing the typewriter community in a sense. There's nothing wrong with plastic body typewriters other than they're oftentimes mechanically not quite as well engineered or built. But nothing beats uh, the look of a classic mid or early 20th century typewriter. While it's impractical to carry a full-size standard upright typewriter out in public, a portable, a medium-sized portable from mid to early 20th century, one that is in good mechanical shape and is fairly quiet, has a fairly resilient platen, 
uh, it can be a really good role model for representing the typewriter community because people love the look of older machines. Uh, even something like this 1950s style machine, not like a black lacquered typewriter with round keys, but it's certainly functional and it is old enough to give some kind of a, of a look to it that a lot of people appreciate, especially younger people. I had an experience just this morning, in fact, when we, or it was actually yesterday morning, we went to lunch uh, and a late afternoon at our local coffee shop here in San Antonio, Halcyon Coffee that we've been enjoying. And I took the typewriter with me in the car, we drove down there. I did a lot of walking and my feet were sore, so I, <laughs> I wanted to drive to the coffee shop. But anyway, so I took the, the I, we went in without the typewriter, left the typewriter in the car. Wasn't sure if I was gonna take it out. Uh, so we ordered our coffee and our snack and uh, I decided, okay, uh, maybe it was uh, getting the caffeine in my system, but we sat at a long wooden table with some young students, college college age students, and I went out to the car, brought the quiet writer in, set it up, and just started writing uh, kind of stream of consciousness, kind of blog article kind of stuff, and I overheard some of the students start to talk about the typewriter. I think they were talking about photography or something. Maybe they were in a photo class, but they started talking about, oh, look at the typewriter, and maybe you should take a picture of that. And pretty soon they were talking to me about the typewriter, and one of the gals had a digital SLR and asked me if she wouldn't mind if she took pictures, if I wouldn't mind if she took pictures of my typewriter, and I said, no problem. So I sat there and tried to be as unselfconscious as I could. And of course, when you're doing that, the more the more you try to be unselfconscious, the more mistakes you make as you're typing. But anyway, so she took some photos of me and uh, I had fun and I got the impression that, you know, there is this kind of backlash that has happened in the last few years against what is called in popular culture hipsterism. And I don't know if hipsterism was really an artifact of the Gen Xer generation, but these kids appear to be millennials and certainly for them, they didn't see the typewriter as an affectation. Maybe my age has something to do with it, but uh, they just thought it was cool. It, to them, it didn't look like I was being ironic or being hipster with a typewriter or anything in, in a hipster coffee shop. It was just something cool to see. I think the mechanical nature of it is so foreign and it's just intrinsically interesting to them. Anyway, having said all that, that might be another good reason for you to bring a medium-sized portable machine, something a little bit better representative of what typewriters are and what they're capable of doing out in public as you're traveling. Now I took with me on my trip a pack of this writing paper that I recently ordered and also a pack of this green engineering paper that I like to type on occasionally. But one of the things I should have brought with me and I didn't is I should have brought some letter writing paper. I have some Clairefontaine really nice typewriter quality and fountain pen quality, a smaller sheets of paper and the and matching envelopes and I forgot to bring stamps so we ended up going to the post office in downtown San Antonio to get some stamps and mail some postcards but if you are on the road with a typewriter you really should think about letter writing and bring some stamps bring your envelopes and paper some smaller size stationery that are it's more compatible for personal letter writing and uh, use that typewriter to send notes home to family and friends on your trip. Well, I'm always accused of overpacking whenever I go on these kinds of trips, but uh, I took my Android phone, its charger, I took my I iOS, my iPod, its charger, my Lumix G7, its battery charger, and its kit of lenses. And what else did I bring? Oh, I brought a uh, mobile battery charger for charging up phones, and it has a charger. But you know what? <laughs> that typewriter right there, it doesn't need a charger. <laughs> That's another good thing about typewriters, right? All you need is the correction tape, which is really not necessary, just don't make mistakes. But mainly, just bring some paper, have a fresh ribbon and you're set to go. And that really is the value of a typewriter, is minimal maintenance. You can go from thoughts in your head to inked, mechanically printed letters and words on paper. It's a wonderful thing. 
Travel with a typewriter. It's a great companion, especially for a car trip. Well, this is Joe from San Antonio from the tiny house. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.